This segment is on planning the route to school as part of the how to create a walking, rolling school bus. Planning your route is an important step when planning your walking school bus and or bike train group. Some key safety elements to consider while planning your route include, do you have room to walk or bike? Are there good sidewalks? Is it easy to cross the street and are there crossing guards at the crosswalk present? Some of these key observations can help you plan your route for a safer experience. Determining the schedule will help you build your walking school bus program. Working together and communicating with your participating families plays a vital role in sustaining your walking groups. Be sure to stay in constant contact with your families and plan your walking school bus policies together so your walking experience is enjoyable for everyone in the group. Creating a walking route to school can help encourage safe walking habits for walking leaders and students. Let's take a look at this map. This is a gridded neighborhood with easy access to the school. The school is at the top right of the map. The green lines represent sidewalks and the red lines represent no sidewalks present. The green boxes represent walking school bus stops to pick up the students. The intersections circled here have crosswalks and crossing guards. Let's look at two route examples of walking school buses. The green box at the bottom left is the start of the first walking school bus route. As the walking school bus reaches the last home on the route, the walking leader has to make a decision to cross mid-block or continue on to the crosswalk. While the shortest distance to school would be mid-block, the walking leader should continue to the crosswalk where there's a crossing guard present for families to cross. The green box at the top left represents the start of our next walking school bus route. As you can see, many of the neighborhood streets don't have sidewalks, represented by the red lines. The walking school bus groups should walk facing traffic in the grass if there are no sidewalks. After the last student is picked up, the quickest route may not be the easiest or the safest route. The walking school bus leader should walk to the nearest sidewalk on the way to school, leading the group to a crosswalk, avoiding any opportunity to cross mid-block. Distance can play a big part on whether your group is walking or biking to school. Unlike our previous gridded neighborhood school examples, this neighborhood has less connectivity with many cul-de-sacs. While this neighborhood is close to the school, there is no connection to the school from the north, set, north side of the neighborhood. Students would have to walk or bike around the neighborhood to get to school. However, each of these neighborhood streets and roads has sidewalks. For the longer commutes to school, bike trains can help reduce the time it takes to travel to school compared to walking. Since there's a lack of neighborhood connectivity, a central meeting point for walking school bus or bike train groups is ideal. Parents can walk, bike, or drive to these meeting points. Park and walk locations are a great way to cover the travel distance while experiencing the walking group option. A meeting point closer to the entrance would help reduce the distance for the walking school bus groups. Another option would be a drop-off location at a nearby neighborhood. Coordinating a student drop-off to join a walking school bus group with nearby neighbors could be a great way to stay connected to your community and enjoy the walking school bus experience. You also get to avoid the school car line too. Thank you for attending the Planning the Route segment from the Florida Safe Routes to School, How to Create a Walking, Rolling School Bus Training. For more information about the Florida Safe Routes to School program, visit floridasrts.com.